Let's talk about my girl, Alyssa Majibo. Alyssa Majibo has broken African Twitter, has broken African Instagram, has broken African social media by saying something that I think a lot of us probably feel, but she said it in a very mean way and people aren't really liking what she said and she said that people back home are leeches are layabouts are bums and that she's not sending anyone back home any money because it's her money and it's her fucking money let's hear what elsa majiba has to say about this she's fucking wild sending money back home or to your extended family is such a common african <laughs> practice that i that i absolutely hate i i saw my dad doing it and i don't even know any of my extended family i absolutely hate it's fucking insane but big up her big up her I saw him doing it with his brothers, with his sisters, with his grandparents, parents, like everyone in the family. As long as you have a job, they expect you to share that money accordingly. And that I find it kind of insane, though, how she doesn't know any of her dad's siblings. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Is she doing that on purpose? You think she's like purposely not trying to know them so that they don't ask her for money? Or does she generally not know her dad's family on her like it's a bit strange isn't it? like so you know about your dad sending money back home but you don't know them on a personal level are you trying not to know them have you never met them are you pretending like you don't know them what's going on here i will not be participating yet i, I already knew i would never participate in this <laughs> i already knew so she didn't even do it once she just saw it and said nah not doing that keeping my money like how do you come and tell me Oh, my kids are starving. Yeah, they're starving because you're fucking lazy. Get off your ass, get a job and feed your kids. Jesus Christ, bruh. That is so callous and so mean unnecessary. Yes, there are some people. I think I would have agreed with her in the past. I think when I was younger, living at home, I think I would have agreed with her because I think when you're younger, living at home and your parents are sending money back to Africa all the time to siblings who you know are clearly scamming your parents and shit, you sometimes can have... You can sometimes build a sense of contempt for your parents because you feel like they're getting their wall pulled over their eyes. But when you grow older, when you mature, you realize your parents know they're getting the wall pulled over their eyes. But that's what you do for family. You know, like you, you just go above and beyond for your family, sometimes to your own detriment. It's kind of one of the curses of family. You just, they can sometimes get away with shit. Regular people will never get away with it with you, you know? I think that's the main thing. And I also think as like a weird sort of like side, there's a part of me that thinks as well, similar to like relationships and stuff and having best friends. I think you need people in your life that can do that shit to you like that, that can maybe take advantage of you so that it teaches you how to like say no to people that aren't that close to you. You know, if you get what I mean? Having the ability to sort of like endure and put up with somebody who's clearly trying to pull the wool over your eyes, who's clearly feigning distress and feigning helplessness because they're just too lazy or don't don't want to figure out their own way. I think that's a good practice to practice, like just helping people like that out, even if you know they are trying to scam you. There's nothing wrong with that. And I also think if you're lucky enough to figure something out in life, especially with Elsa, from what I remember about her, She's mostly like a comedian, maybe does skits, just a general social media type of person, which is not really something that you can ever plan for or go to school for. It's almost a career that you get by luck. Yes, you put out a lot of content, but it's, it, you know, you can't really guarantee your success to become a social media influencer full time. It's almost like the, the, the audience or the viewers have to choose you. The stars have to align. So if you're that lucky to make that sort of a career, it's almost like a obligation for you to help people. Now that you're lucky enough to make this career that most people will never be able to make, where you can kind of post one square on your feed and get paid thousands or hundreds of money, wherever it may be, it's yours, of course. But with that kind of ability to do that, I think it comes with a certain level of responsibility, especially if you're an African person, to maybe give back. And I feel that sometimes that lack of like, care and like whatever love is probably the reason why we're at where we are you know as a community of people right the lot of friction and the infighting and the violence all this sort of malarkey maybe comes from this like me and my me and my own shit type of thing we're not very you know what i mean like there's not a lot of sharing and giving and stuff it's all like individual my family my friends my dish just solo thing not a lot of giving and i feel like in that position you kind of have to do it now obviously do it to a a limit maybe to you know there's all there's always scenarios where maybe you can maybe say no and shit but i think overall 
being open to give people things and share, I think it's a good trait to have. I really do think it's a good trait to have. I don't think closing your fist all the time and demanding people do this and that and that for you, for you to give is really the right way to go about things. And also there's this um, one, there's this one like extended family member of ours. And she used to ask my dad for money and she texted me and she asks me for money. You've been asking my dad for money since before I was born. I was born, I was raised, I grew up. Now you're asking me for money. You lazy son of a bitch. I am not. It's mad that you think that, isn't it? I, I always wondered why people who make it think that just because they made it, everyone else can make it too. I've also wondered people that make it, why they think everyone also wants to make it too. Maybe in life, the reason why certain people or only a small percentage of us can make it is because you're meant to also then help the people who can't. That's kind of your role in life. You're, you've kind of been able to make it. You've been blessed. You've been ordained. You've been given that fucking doop, touch. Now you're making it. Your kind of role is also to kind of now give to others, you know? And if you don't do that, then what's the point? Like, you might as well just go work a regular job. You kind of been given this really amazing lifestyle, this amazing career trajectory or this amazing career path that you can then now use whatever you have to help loads of people because you're getting an abundance of things coming to you. And I feel like if it was me, there's a limit to how much stuff you can buy, a limit to how many experiences you can have. You're only one person. But having the ability to help people genuinely with the money that you get from these sort of things, especially when you're African, is really, really cool. Honestly, it's really cool. Like, I don't know, setting up fucking, I don't know, studios in your home country, setting up fucking, you know, academies to teach people how to maybe get started as being an influencer or a social media person, whatever, maybe all these things were really, really fucking cool. Instead of like stunting on and shitting on people back home because they weren't fortunate enough to make it the way you made it. Because sometimes I remember back in the day, I used to think a little bit like this. I used to think, oh, why aren't you helping yourself? But sometimes people just don't know how to. Maybe there's also the scenario where in some countries in Africa, maybe there's just not the jobs that you think they have. Maybe it's not the, it's not through lack of effort. Maybe these people are trying to get on their own feet. I don't think most people enjoy having their hand out and waiting for handouts. I don't think they enjoy it. They do it because it's a last resort and they have to eat and they have to provide for themselves, provide for their family. So if there's somebody around that can help, of course they're going to put their hand out and say, hey, can you help me? And if you've got some, something, and you can give, why not give it? Give it freely. Give it without, you know, expectation. Give it without fucking expecting to get paid back. I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think in genuine, genuinely, considering how poor some African fam some African countries are, there's definitely, I think, a scenario where some of these people back home genuinely either can't get jobs or the jobs that they can get don't pay enough to actually support or cover all their needs. And if they have a family, if they have a family member who lives in Europe, who's doing really well for themselves and has figured it out, why shouldn't they ask for your, some of your money? Why shouldn't they ask for you to help them out? Why wouldn't they do that? Wouldn't you want someone to do that for you if you're in that same position? I don't know. It almost feels like that kind of pull yourself up by your bootstrap thing. And I've always wondered, like, I've always wanted to ask somebody like, why is it when people make it, they almost, it's not as if they like, they become humble. That, like, I would imagine like if you made it in a very highly contested, highly competitive cutthroat niche or sector and you were one of the ones to make it and it's like really hard to make it whatever feel i don't know something can't come to mind i would imagine that it would make you humble or it'd make you appreciative that you did make it and it would then make you way more open and giving to people because you knew how hard it was for you so if you can ease somebody else's pain if you can help them along the way you're just going to do it because you know how hard it was for you but if anything, it has the opposite effect, it feels like. It feels like when people, especially influencers or social media people make it, they become super resentful of people that don't make it. Like, it's almost like they're judging you. Like, oh, I did it. It's the internet. It's easy. Why can't you just do it for yourself? It's like, bro, it's not, it's not really isn't that easy. It's not, you know, if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. You did it. You were quote unquote lucky to do it. Yes, your hard work and your effort kind of paved the way. But you did it, fair enough. But now you've did it. Like, you can kind of help some of us. Maybe leave the door slightly ajar. Maybe put us in touch with certain people. Maybe, you know, fund a few things here and there. That's kind of cool. But for some reason, someone like her, like, she seems to be really angry. It almost seems to, like, piss her off. That now she's in the position where she's made it. And she's shining. She's covering herself in loads of fucking moisturizer and looking like a literal statue, right? 
she because of course it's part of like you know doing well is living living and looking and feeling good so she's sharing pictures of herself online all these amazing outfits having fun traveling the world having a good time and people think oh you're doing well maybe you're with your work with your wellness you can maybe help me out and then she gets pissed off when they fucking reach out she gets annoyed like, don't you dare recognize that i'm doing well and then ask me to help you don't you dare just double tap just double tap and keep it moving it's like what so weird yeah big up seven dirty she's flexing on poor africans watching who, mu who how much product she's using exactly and you know what's funny as well she's flexing on poor africans who are most likely playing a part in making the product that she's making and they're probably making the product she's making for fucking slave labor fucking rates that's the irony of it big up fashion roadman wild one my guy not being wealthy doesn't make someone lazy it's just such a brain dead take exactly our poor farm workers in africa countries lazy toiling away in the sourcing sun exactly in the scorching sun exactly exactly and and i think this is i feel like this is a mentality that only happens when people is it i guess is it newly rich i don't know what it is when you're when you're newly actualized when you finally made it i feel like some for some reason it breaks people's brains it almost makes them feel like oh I knew it. It was easy. See, everyone else is not doing it because they're lazy. It's like, uh, or haven't you realized that it's not really an exact science? It's maybe based on who you know, timing, luck, all these things play into it. So it should maybe make you a little bit more humble and very, very appreciative of what you've got, but also make you kind of steadfast in your need to kind of help people. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, seven dirty. She's being scammed by random beauty product companies. She can't afford it exactly um big up chris mack people who make it have an odd tendency to not realize that probably wasn't just hard work and dedication that got them there to the top it's often due to a combo of luck and con exactly luck and circumstance exactly you'd think that luck and circumstance would make you a little bit more appreciative and now have a lot more humility about what you have and then want to kind of give back to people and i don't know maybe not maybe not maybe not not fitting your habits i'm not clearly you're too you're too lazy to be alive i will let let you starve the fuck you're too lazy to be alive i would let you starve one more time clearly you're too you're too lazy to be alive i will let you starve the fuck fucking hell the contempt the contempt the resentment is fucking crazy and life has a really life has a really crazy habit of humbling you right life has a really crazy habit and and i wouldn't and i don't like that whole thing people do where it's like oh life will humble you you shouldn't have to learn that way you shouldn't have to lose things and become broke and you know get cheated on or get scammed for you to finally learn how to treat people with respect and dignity you should be able to you know um uh have compassion for people just off the strength of them being another human being just like you but i feel like this level of contempt is just a bit unnecessary just a bit too much especially for people who live in places where legitimately their circumstances their surroundings dictate what level of success they have or don't have we live in western europe most of us live in you know um what you call it um in western europe and stuff or you know in, in places in the western hemisphere and we get to dictate our surroundings essentially we get to kind of be the masters of our own destiny and kind of you know um kind of charge forward in our own path but some people in the world don't get that choice whatever's around them they have to fucking use to their liking or use to their needs and shit but the circumstances in the world around them dictates what they can and cannot have they are basically you know have no way else to kind of go and to choose from so to be that dismissive and to be that close fisted with people like that is kind of dark. It's kind of dark. It's kind of fucking dark, especially when you're just a social media influencer. If you were somebody that legitimately started your own fucking company and you took it from one employee to like 60,000, different sort of conversation. But when you just, you know, you lucked out and became a fashion influencer or a social media influencer and you've now got this like highfalutin opinion of yourself that you're better than people and you're above helping them and they need to just help themselves it's like bro like you kind of lucked out in your career like use some of that luck and you know bless other people with that kind of luck that kind of stardust luck that you have and who knows maybe giving back and blessing people might actually go in a long way to bless you 
maybe it might go a long way to bless you you never fucking know but big up Elsa Majibo she's going through it I'm sure she's going to make another video apologizing or trying to explain or doubling down what she's got to say but I feel her in a little bit I feel her in some respects I understand when you're doing your own thing and people are, are just asking you for things can be annoying but I also think that's kind of the price of success you know you kind of get to live this life that most people don't get to live and with that success comes the I won't say an obligation, but it's basically an obligation to help people where, where you can. I think that's also a part of the process. You shouldn't be um, avoiding that or only choosing to do the things that you want to do, you know, when it comes to success, which comes just to enjoying the money and enjoying the trappings of success, but not being willing to give back to people. I think that's really fucking dark hearted, spirited and all of those things in between personally. But I could be wrong, but I could be wrong.